Hello, welcome to Ozpol Explained, and here we are with the Mayor of Fremantle, Brad Pettit. For accessibility purposes, could you just quickly give yourself a quick visual description for people who cannot yeah, see? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm, I'm Brad Pettit. I am a male of late forties, going grey. In fact, I don't, this is the uh, the dangers of being a mayor that you do you, you do go grey. I wasn't grey when I started. And if you're new here, I have curly reddish brown hair and a beard. So, to begin with, where do local governments originate from? I mean, it's interesting, local governments all around, are, all, are all around the world, but they actually don't originate from the Constitution of Australia, because we're not actually in the Constitution, we are actually the product of states. So, but local governments really have been around, um, I think, in pretty well all states, pretty soon after white settlement in, in, in each of those states. So I think in, in WA, it goes back to that in the 30s, where they were first set up and um, they, they were kind of set up as localised authorities and kind of formalised in the 1870s um, as road boards actually. So it's interesting enough kind of actually because one of their key roles was actually creating settlements and linking be it, um, roads and, and railways between places. So you'll still see historically a lot of local governments did start as as, local, as, as road boards and other municipalities all that style. And, and the fact we're not in the constitution has been a great source of angst, I think, for local government because we see ourselves as an intrinsic now, an intrinsic part of the good governance of the country. I mean, we are the, that level of governance closest to the people. I think um, often when people have a problem, um, it's a problem that will, you know, that they often look to the local government to solve. But actually local governments, you know, they, are, they actually are at the whim, really, of state governments. and. I mean, so we're in the state government constitution, but certainly not, not in the federal constitution. There has been a real push by local governments for that to happen. Look, I think it will happen one day. It feels to me like, like it should. We do play a really important role. That said, um, we've got along pretty well so far without it. And I think you'll, people will agree now that local governments play a really important role. And look, and they're really varied, you know, and they're, they're really varied across the country from you know, very small local governments like in the Murchison here. I mean, there's a, I've probably only a few hundred people to big local governments like City of Stirling, which are over 300,000 people. You know, so it's a, very, it's a very mixed beast. Is a lot of the power of local governments effectively just simply because the states have granted that yes. and oversee it? Entirely. That all of local governments, local governments only exist at the, at the will of the state and all the powers are because the state grant them to us and they could all be taken away, that's right. So there is, because we're not in the constitution. Or interesting. And also what's interesting as well is like, as a mayor, I mean, mayors don't have much power either. So even within the local government, mayors don't make any decisions by themselves, only in conjunction with the council. The council can make lots of decisions, uh, but, but, but you need to vote on those. So there's a really interesting actually, which actually forces effective mayors need to be very collaborative because they need the council to support them on everything they do. Uh, otherwise you've got no power at all. Yeah, so, uh, and so this is really, it's an interesting space to be in because yeah, both the power at the local government level and, the, and, and below that at the mayor level is very much um, around how you work with people and, and uh, in terms of us getting things done, you've got to collaborate with the state government uh, around because a lot of funding comes through them. So um, in terms of where we get our resources from, broadly speaking, like the city of Fremantle, our budget's about $100 million a year. About half of that comes from rates. A whole bunch of that other stuff comes from uh, parking and other, you know, fees and charges and then but then a good chunk of it also comes from the state government another another federal government grant a lot of people are probably wondering what is it that local governments actually do because you see like federal governments are have like very outlined powers state governments mm. take care of things like health and major roads but what does local government do often the joke about local government is that what we do is roads rates and rubbish um, <laughs> and there's some truth in that local roads um, so um, that aren't main roads we you look after all of those um, we also do do rubbish. We pick up your rubbish, we recycle it, and those kinds of things. And we collect rates to, to fund those things. But the truth is that local governments have has evolved beyond merely roads, rates, and rubbish into much more than that. Um, and, and and that's important. So the key things that we love in our community be our libraries, be our festivals, the events, be it actually how your main street looks and and and, and how that's activated and. Um, and our fresco dining and uh, planning and all those things are actually all fall under the domain of local government. So it's a really varied, um, and that's why well, one of the things, reasons I love working in it because it is so so varied. Local government I mean, does some of those 
key basics around you know, keeping populations healthy. Um, we, we look after environmental health in terms of food regulations in local government and in, in, local, in the area, all the way through to thinking strategically about the planning for the future of a city, how high buildings should be, um, um, how many people we yeah, aim to get in, in key locations, where the industrial areas should be versus the non-industrial areas, all those things. So local government does a lot. There is some, I think there is a fair bit of confusion in the community sometimes about which, because we've got those three levels about where things sit. I mean, just to maybe flip it a little bit, and there are, I mean, as you said, state governments are responsible for housing, but often people think, take, they take a very topical issue, homelessness, but that's the local government responsibility. Why doesn't local government clean that, uh, fix that up? But the truth of the matter is that it's not something local governments could ever do by themselves, because we aren't responsible for housing. We aren't responsible for so social housing. The whole um, housing sector is a state government area. What we can do then is work with state governments to make sure we allow for the right kind of housing in the right locations. So um, through our planning, making sure we, we, we get the housing and then, um, then work with other state government agencies, be it mental health and, and, and others or, 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 or drug, drug and alcohol agencies um, around services. So it's only through that kind of collaboration between local and state they actually get on top of complex issues like homelessness. Well, that leads in very nicely to another question I had, which is what is like the crossover between the responsibilities of state government mm. and local government? Um, the reality is it's, it's a lot of crossover. It'd be fair to say there's almost not an area where there is an overlap. Even from local roads, we, we might, that might be our job to look after local roads, but it's the state government's responsibility, main roads' responsibility, to put line markings on local roads. <laughs> yeah, so you have this kind of really weird, right. so, or put speed, so, or, or to determine the speed of a local road. So, we, so these, all those things are, which people might assume is a local responsibility. So there's this kind of strange thing where we will submit the plans, but it needs the state approval. So, the, so it actually ends up being quite late, and I think sometimes it's probably a bit overly um, cumbersome, even in, in planning, for example, um, whilst we, we make the decisions um, with the planning authority. So someone, if you put a, say you want to go and build a, um, you know, you want to build an extension to your house, you'll come to the local government to put in your planning application. But that planning application is determined based on rules that are in part set by the state government, in part set by the local government. So it, it actually is quite complicated and I understand that sometimes people really do struggle to go work out where is that line between the local authority and the state authority and that's because often there is actually a blurring and an overlap of responsibilities and that almost applies to every sector. And a lot of what we do is actually advocate to state government around proper resourcing or changing of the rules or changing of investment. So uh, about and actually getting better outcomes for our local community. So you sound quite busy. <laughs> <laughs> There's never a dull moment. It's true. It's one of those jobs where it never, it, 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 it is never boring and every day is different. Can local governments make laws for their area or are they more of just sort of like a, a managerial re sort of relationship between state and yeah. the people? We can make laws, um, in fact. So we can make any law, in fact, that's seen, you know, for the benefit of our, of our community and for the good governance of our, of our community. But what is interesting again, it comes back to the earlier question about the overlap. That law can only, will only be able to stand if it's not as seen as being in contradiction or um, with a state law. Now, so to give you some examples, there's maybe interesting examples of this in Frio because we regularly make local laws. And you know, Frio is a progressive council, often we try and do things that kind of push the public debate forward. And perhaps one of the um, well, public examples of this in recent years was the round plastic bags. So um, many years ago, uh, we were petitioned by our community to ban uh, single-use plastic bags. The council agreed. So we advertised that we would have a local law that would ban plastic bags from being, single-use plastic bags from being given out in the city of Frio. But the state government upper house has a committee whose job it is to look at le local laws and they if, they, if they deem that it's not um, consistent with a state law, then they can wipe that, that local law out. They nullified that, that local law on plastic bags um, on a technicality. Um, we changed we changed that technicality, took it back again as a local law. The second time it was also uh, nullified and, and, um, and stopped from coming into being 
for actually for a reason that was never understood, other than the fact I think that it was the Conservative government at the time that didn't like it. So, but what that ultimately meant though that was that soon after the state um, brought in their own law that was identical to the local law that the City of Fremantle had been pushing and actually had, had passed twice. I mean, there was interesting cases around how that works, but, but we, we can make local laws around lots of different things. And we can do local laws around, say, not, not smoking in certain public places, whatever it might be. But obviously there are limitations on that. We can't create our own police force, we can't you know, do all those kinds of things, but we can do lots of other local laws that benefit our community. Do you know yeah. if that's consistent with all, like, across all states? The scope of local government differs marginally across states, but not, not, but not hugely. Um, because each state has its own local government act that, that, that we operate under. WA, actually interestingly, it's actually post WA Inc, um, you know, which is the whole scandal of the late 80s, early 90s, means that we're probably a bit more conservative around what we let local governments do. For example, local governments here can't um, set up separate corporations for profit and those kinds of things in the way that you might in other states, which means that our funding here is a bit more limited. Uh, but, but, but largely, you'll find that it's pretty similar across states. How does the structure of local government work? So, like, say, like, federally or state, you would have two chambers, except for Queensland, um, yeah. and you would have, like, a bunch of parties that would then work in a parliament. So local government has a slightly different structure in the sense of, well, there's only one chamber. The other difference in WA, and this is something that actually doesn't apply to all states, but so far WA largely hasn't had political parties. The reason that's important about political parties is that in the federal and state parliament, it's pretty rare that you have a debate in the chamber and people change their mind. You know, everyone kind of goes in really with a predetermined party position um, and kind of, and that outcome's kind of played out. But what I really like about local government is you can actually literally turn up and people will have the discussion and you'll listen to each other and you'll You'll change, people will change their vote on the night um, and determine their vote on the night. I, it's actually how democracy should work. You listen to each other, you have a debate, you kind of work it out, you might come to a bit of a consensus and compromise, um, which I think no longer happens in any other parliament. So, so it's a bit, di bit different in that way too. It's also really different because you have the decisions you make are really tangible. So, you know, often you'll have the people who are going to be impacted by that decision in the, in the room giving you eye contact while you're making the decision, you know, so it's, it, 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 it's hard in some ways and it's, um, you know, when you're making a tough decision about, you know, someone's, someone's house and the neighbours don't like it and they want to do it and, you know, it's, it, it's tough, you know, and, uh, but, yeah, but you, you really are weighing up the pros and cons in the, you know, in the cold light of day with the people there, with the evidence there, with the, with the planning scheme there, so it, 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 it is quite, quite different like that. Um, yeah, but certainly only, only one chamber. Um, local governments vary in size, they're normally much smaller than state governments which, you know, or federal governments have um, tens of people in the chamber. Normally it would be somewhere between seven, lower number, all the way up to maybe 13 or 15 in the higher number. Specifically, what does a mayor do? My role is, of, is a bit like a chair of a board in some ways, you could say. And, um, so um, I, my job is to represent the council represent, and the city of Fremantle as a whole. Um, and speak on, on, on their behalf. I, I also importantly chair those meetings. So that's why I say like, I might like the chair. If you imagine the council's like the board, I, I, I chair those meetings um, and make sure that we can actually come to decisions. I mean, I play a whole bunch of civic stuff I do, like citizenship ceremonies and kind of Anzac Day and ceremonial stuff as well. Um, but that doesn't really describe what takes up most of my time because what a lot of your time really is doing is working with the council and the CEO to map out the key direction that the council is going and those key decisions you need to make along the way and then making sure that you can actually move together as an organisation and get those often tricky decisions uh, solved and, 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 and taken forward. So um, it's really varied, like my, my day will be a combination of you know, lots of emails um, to constituents and staff members all the way through to meeting people who want to do different projects, be it in the arts or development or, or, or environment, um, and then ultimately through to you know, more formal kind of things where I'm kind of talking at, at different civic events. So it's, um, yeah, it, it's always varied and never boring. Is there a difference between, say, like a mayor or a shire president? Are they basically the same thing, just they, yeah. different names? They are, so normally the difference between a mayor and a shire president is 
Mayor, side presidents normally refer to smaller, often rural councils. So, so a city, a city of Fremantle, was a council that's normally above 30,000 people. So the bigger councils are called cities. The smaller council areas are towns. And then the smaller ones, again, the shires. Um, it's kind of roughly speaking. So, um, so, so normally it, it's mayors. And then the only Lord Mayor that there is, is the, is the mayor of the capital city. So that's why the Perth mayor is the Lord Mayor. Speaking of sizes, like federal electorates, for example, are based on population sizes yep. and they shift based off that. But how do we determine like local government areas? Yeah, they're fixed. They're totally different. So that's right. So federal and state seats are always moving so, that, so they can maintain a pretty even population distribution between them. Um, the truth of the matter is local government boundaries are, are fixed. Um, and our boundary has been largely fixed for, I don't know, I don't know when it last moved, to be honest with you, but many, many decades, um, if it's ever moved at all. So, so, and look, it doesn't mean you can't change them, but it's quite hard changing them. And this has actually been that plenty of state governments have attempted to amalgamate local governments because the truth of the matter is WA especially has a lot of local governments, there's 130 of us, something about that, and about 30 of those in the metro area, uh, which is a lot. Brisbane has one, and we probably have a lot of smaller ones, but every time those amalgamations of bringing together local governments tries to happen, there's a lot of it can be a lot of resistance, and um, the the way that the legislation the state government is set up, it's very hard to do it without, unless all local governments agree. So we have seen very rarely have local governments actually merged and combined. Thank you so much for was, your time. That was my Thank pleasure. So and there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned lots. Comment down below what you would like to learn about next. Uh, subscribe, share all those things. And also there's a Patreon where you can support free education for everyone. Thank you and I will see you next time.